In this session, we are continuing on our discussion of inventory. We're going to start talking about specific costing methodologies, specifically FIFO, which is first in, first out, LIFO, last in, first out, weighted average, and specific identification. We're going to see what each of these terms means and how it will impact the journal entry. So in the last section, when we just introduced inventory, we assumed what the cost was. We knew what the cost of the units were, and nothing really changed. It was just to simplify it, just to show you what the journal entries looked like. Now, in real life, prices change over time. Now, what I mean by that is if we buy, we'll use the example of apples. If we buy so many barrels of apples, so many baskets of apples uh, on one day, and then we as a store come back a month or two later and buy some more, the prices may very well have changed. Generally, they increase, which would be inflation. However, there are situations where we have periods of deflation temporarily. So prices change over time. In many cases, companies will keep inventory balances. So they may have some items that cost them 10 cents per unit. Other items, you know, the same item, just purchased at different times, that cost 12 cents per unit, and maybe some more that cost 14 cents. So the question is, what do we use for our journal entry? Just as a refresher, the journal entry looks like a debit to cost of goods sold, in this case $60, to increase that expense, and a credit to inventory for $60 as well. So that assumed we knew the price, but now we're taking away that assumption, we're going to have to figure out what it is ourselves. So first of all, let's talk about physical flow of inventory. If we're looking at like milk, let's take milk for an example. The store loads it from the back of the shelf in the cooler. The newest inventory is always in the very back. They want the customers to pull the milk from the front of the shelf, which is the oldest milk, so that it gets used up instead of sitting around and spoiling. If everybody reached to the back of the shelf to grab newer milk, and nobody ever pulled the milk at the front of the shelf, there would be a lot of spoilage of that milk. So, of course, some people still do it to get the newer date, but they want people to pull from the front. That's physical flow for a milk cooler, for a perishable product, perishable food item. Well, let's talk about a rock pile. If you go to a rock quarry or wherever else they sell rock, they generally pile it up. The newer stuff keeps getting added to the top. If you go in with your truck, with your, uh, you know, you're digging up some more rock to take with you to buy, you're not going to dig to the bottom of that pile and get the oldest rock. That would be very difficult to do. Instead, you're going to pull from the top, which is the newest rock. So if you think about it, if they keep adding more and more rock, the older stuff is going to continue to get buried and you constantly are pulling new rock. Now, the good thing about rock is it doesn't perish, so it really doesn't matter whether you got new rock or old rock. It's the same basic thing. Once you deplete the inventory, at that point, the old rock would finally be exposed and you'd use it up. So here we have uh, an example using apples earlier. Ten apples were purchased for $0.25 cents per unit. I know these prices may be outrageous, I'm just throwing out some examples. 10 apples were purchased for 25 cents per unit. 15 apples were purchased for 22 cents per unit. 22 apples were purchased for 26 cents per unit. So now we're going to sell eight apples. The question is, what cost do we use for the journal entry? Do we use 25 cents, 22 cents, 26 cents, maybe an average of the three? The thing with these types of items, we're not actually putting a cost tag or a price tag on each apple. So we really don't know when we grab eight of them, we may not know what that exact apple actually cost us. We don't know. We know what we paid for all these apples at different times, but we don't necessarily know what each individual physical apple cost. Again, physical flow, since this is an apple, it's a perishable item, we want them to always pull the oldest apples. That way they don't perish. But the physical flow does not have to match the cost or accounting flow. 
So the methods we have, now we're going to briefly talk about these methods. We do go into more detail, more examples in part two of this particular course. But for right now, part one is all about giving you an overview and some basic examples of the various accounting topics. So with FIFO, first in, first out, we're saying that the first item or cost per unit into inventory, in other words, the first one we bought, the oldest item, that's the first one we're going to pull out of inventory to cost of goods sold. Now, again, we could be talking physical flow. We could be talking cost flow. They don't have to match. If we're talking cost flow, which is what we're really concerned with here, we're saying the first cost per unit that we bought, that's the first one we're going to use up to take it out to cost of goods sold. So that's going to be our journal entry where we debit cost of goods sold to increase it and we credit inventory to decrease that. The oldest cost that we still have available. Now, obviously, we only have so many of each cost. As we use them up, they're gone. Life was the exact opposite. Last in, first out. The last item into inventory, the newest one, is the first one that goes out of inventory to cost of goods sold. FIFO is similar to the milk example. LIFO is similar to the rock pile example, if we're talking physical flow. Specific identification is a situation where we do track individual physical units and we attach a tag or some sort of cost to it. So in this case, the physical flow has to match the cost flow. It's not a commonly used method. It's only for larger items where you can really, again, specifically identify it. Weighted average is a fairly common method. It's, it's not as common as FIFO, but it's still relatively common. What happens here is we take a look at all the inventory we have, the total number of units, the total cost of all that inventory, and we calculate a weighted average every time the inventory changes. In other words, every time we purchase new inventory, we recalculate the cost per unit. So to get a cost per unit, we take total cost of all that inventory at that point divided by total units at that point. And we're going to see examples of these calculations. What I have here in the beginning of this slide is five layers of accounting, or five layers of cost, five layers of inventory. It shows that we started off the year with some beginning inventory, 100 units at 325 per unit. So here's the total cost of that layer. And then there's a running total that continually accumulates. 215, we purchased 80 more at a higher price. And every month, we purchase more inventory and the price continues to rise. At the end of the five, uh, end of May, or I guess the beginning of May, we have $2,151 of inventory. These are the items we have to sell. Now we're going to track the actual sales. On February 28th, we purchased or we sold 120 units. Now, I did not throw in the sales price here because I didn't want to confuse the issue, but the sales price is probably going to be higher than the $4. It's going to be maybe 5 or 6 or whatever. We don't need that for this journal entry, though. For this topic, we're just talking about the cost entry itself. So we sold 120 items on 228.16. We sold another 200 on May 15th. The question is, what cost do we use? If we are under the perpetual inventory system, we have to track what inventory did we have to sell by February 28th. In other words, we did not even have these last three layers on that date, so we can't even consider them. We have to gray them out. We have to black them out. We can't use them. But then on 515, obviously, we then have access to whatever's left out of the five layers. Now, the answer of what cost to use will depend on what method we are using. Let's look at FIFO. Let's take the first sale where we sold 120 units on February 28th of 2016. FIFO means the first layer that we're using is the first one we're going to, or the first layer we have 
is the first one we're going to use. So we start at the very top. We need 120 units. Our very first layer has 100. So we can use up 100 of those units at 325. Now this layer is gone. We're done. So what we can basically do at that point is draw right through this layer. Now that's not the best line. We're going to draw through that layer. It's gone. So we used up 100 units at 325 per unit for a total of $325. We still need 20. We needed 120. We used 100. Now we need 20 more. We're going to get that from this layer of 410 per unit at $80 or 80 units. We're going to only use 20 of them. Now we have our 120 that we need. So now basically keep in mind, now we have uh, 60 left. So we have 60 units left that we could purchase. Not the best artist for this, but that's supposed to be 60. That's how many we have left. Now we're going to move on. We're going to buy 200, or I'm sorry, we're selling 200 on May 15th. Now, at this point, we start with the first layer available. This one was already gone. So this 100 is gone. We start with our 60. That takes care of 60 units at 410 per unit. We can move to the next layer and grab our 125 at 425 per unit. That gives us 185 total. We still need 15 more. So we pull those 15 from the 110 uh, unit count, the 410 purchase. So those are 460 per unit. So that's how we would move through FIFO, top to bottom. LIFO, we start at the bottom. Now, again, if we're using the perpetual inventory system, we have to figure out what do we have at that point. When we sold 120 units on May, on uh, February 28th, remember we did not yet have, oops, we did not yet have any of these uh, bottom three layers. They didn't exist. So we can only record what we actually had. We can only sell what we had. So we only had the first two layers at that point. We need 120 units. We're going to start with the bottom layer available at that time, which is the 80 units. So we take 80 units at 410. We need 40 more units to get 120. So we, we're done with this layer. We move to this layer up here, and we grab 40 units out of that first layer at 325 per unit. Keep in mind, we still have 60 units left in that first layer that we haven't touched. But now time goes on. We make three more purchases. And now on May 15th, we need to sell 200 units. Even though we dug into this first layer, we're now at the very bottom again with LIFO. So we start with LIFO. We start at the bottom. We take 95 units at 485. And then we need 105 more units to get 200. So we pull it out of this 110 unit layer for 460 per unit. So we left this first layer kind of partially used up. The second layer is gone. The first layer is partially used up. And we didn't use any of this March 2nd layer. So that's the thing with LIFO. It tends to get a little messy when you're dealing with the layers of inventory. And then finally, we will deal with weighted average. So with weighted average, at, at the time of sale, we have to figure out what did we have at that point, total cost, divided by the total number of units available at that time. So we're selling 120 units on March or uh, February 28th. At that point, we had 180 units to adding these two together. And we had 650, actually 653 total cost. So 653 divided by 180 units is $3.62 per unit. That is our average price that we're using for our sales. So our cost would be 120 units multiplied by $3.62. On May 15th, we're selling 200 units. 
Now, at that time, prior to that sale, we had that weighted average cost of 362. Now we have a total of 2151 cost minus the 434.40 in cost from the first sale. That was the 120 units multiplied by that 300 or three dollar and sixty two cent cost. Our remaining inventory is one thousand seven hundred sixteen dollars and sixty cents. That's our remaining cost of inventory. Our remaining number of units is three hundred ninety. That's our five hundred ten total units. If we add it all up, minus the one hundred twenty units we sold earlier, we have three hundred ninety units left. So seventeen sixteen. So $1,716.60 divided by 390 units is $4.40 average per unit. So we would take that, multiply by 200 to figure out the cost of the inventory we are selling at May 15th. Now, again, we go into more detailed examples. We talk about some additional inventory items in part two of the course. This is just to give you an overview of the, the concept of inventory, the difference between the methods, and all of that.